Cardinal, a couple of things have transpired recently. The United States bishops' efforts mm -hmm. to protect religious freedom. Mm -hmm. Specifically, they've called for the fortnight for freedom. Mm -hmm. Two weeks prior to the 4th of July, begins mm -hmm. on June 21st, mm -hmm. culminates on Independence Day. Mm -hmm. In these efforts, the bishops have called for education, prayer, and public action. Mm -hmm. Why this call for action? Well, because uh, our freedom is threatened in a unique way. Uh, we always relied upon the First Amendment to protect us from people who were even principled and sometimes just prejudiced against the Catholic Church for various reasons. Uh, but we could always point to the First Amendment and say we're still free because we're free to worship, of course. We were just talking about that. But we should be free to preach the gospel. We should be free to help the poor in Christ's name. We should be free to heal the sick in Christ's name. We should be free to educate in Christ's name. And now we're being told for the first time that the government has the right to tell us that our ministries are now public services without religious reference. Uh, we think that's against the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, and eventually the courts will have to decide that. But it's chilling and, and, and difficult for me to live with that my own government is now saying uh, what you thought you could do, namely exercise your religion freely as you define it, now depends upon how we define what you do. So this isn't just the bishops. You have Catholic universities, Notre Dame and many others are saying, look, this is against our identity. You're robbing us of our identity as Catholic. And that's true for you know, uh, various Catholic social services, charities, and many, many institutions around the country in the various ju uh, judicial districts have brought this so that eventually it will have to be resolved because it is a constitutional issue before the Supreme Court. They're doing it in the terms of, of policy. What must you ensure, what must you not ensure? Uh, but policy is a question of conscience. So it's liberty of religion. The church has the right to define her ministries. It's liberty of conscience. We shouldn't be forced to do or to pay for something that we believe is immoral. You've got conscientious objection to war, which the government uh, respects. So why can't you have conscientious objection to abortion? We've had it so far. All the other federal legislation until this most recent health care reform act, which has a good goal of universalizing health care, but as we shouldn't have to choose between universal health care and religious liberty. We always had protection for liberty from the Hyde, the Weldon, and the Church Amendments. Purposely, to get it through the Congress, they took all those protections out. And what we have now is regulations put by the Health and Human Services Department saying, well, we're going to tell you what of your works are Catholic and what are not, and you therefore don't have conscience protection anymore because it's not religious. And we're going to define uh, what you have to do in these public services. That's an unprecedented attack on religious liberty, and we're a bit dismayed, but we have a lot of people saying, yeah, we're dismayed too. And the fortnight for freedom, as it's called, is a moment for people to realize this, to pray harder uh, for the conversion of heart on everybody's part, to go forward with the same freedoms we enjoyed a year ago. Why can't we go back to what we had a year ago? This is something new, and it's not good. And then also to influence public opinion so that eventually, we're still a democratic country, public opinion will influence the government in, at all its levels. And so we, without you know, uh, trying to uh, do anything that will uh, alienate people from our country, uh, we still have to make the public case for uh, defending religious freedom. For 12 years, part of my job was to go around the world as the Vicar General for a missionary religious order. And again and again I saw places, not only in Marxist countries, but in dictatorships elsewhere, where people did not truly enjoy freedom, and especially mm -hmm. not religious freedom. It's the first mm -hmm. of our freedoms. It's in the First Amendment. And I always thanked God when I left those countries that I was an American, and I didn't have to worry about that. Oh now I have to worry about it as an American. That shouldn't happen. Hopefully this, mm -hmm. and even some of the materials that I know you've recently sent to the priests of the Archdiocese, yeah. uh, bulletin inserts that the USCCB mm -hmm. has prepared on conscience, hopefully that can help raise this in Catholics. Or I hope so. Awareness. It shouldn't be a political issue. It's an election year. It's inevitably kind of partisan, and I regret that very much. Because religious freedom shouldn't be something we have to fight about. I mean, it's guaranteed. And uh, so, unfortunately, it is an election year. It'll probably become partisan, and I regret that very deeply. But we have to say this is an issue, politics aside, uh, that we, we can't ignore.